You ever just accidentally like piss on yourself and you go use the bathroom? It's just, oh, it's on. Uh, consider this your definitive guide to watching PewDiePie in 2019. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show we found a way to talk about YouTube videos. I'm your host, Zach Satter, and today's Backlog Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. If you're new around here, on Wednesdays, I take entertainment that I haven't been able to talk about in the rest of the week and talk about it here. For the longest time, my media consumption has been this big pile of anything and everything. I love music and books, TV shows and movies, video games and comics, but above all else, my main source of entertainment, especially in the last few years, comes from this place, YouTube. But I can't go around making YouTube videos about YouTube videos, can I? <laughs> Hell yeah, I can. So today I wanted to answer a question that I have a feeling millions of people want to know the answer to. How and where do I start watching the massive backlog of PewDiePie videos in 2019? But hope you're having a great week. It's time, of course, for YouTube's favorite show. Recently, PewDiePie's channel has increased by millions of subscribers. He's about to hit 80 million subscribers as I'm recording this video, which means that there are millions of people that probably don't know what content of his is worth watching. I mean, he has over 3,700 videos, and that number continues to increase every single day since he does make daily videos. So where do you start? This isn't like a TV show or a movie series where the very beginning is the logical start because most YouTube channels, creators grow and make better content after they've been doing it for a while. Not only will the editing, mic quality, and video quality get better over time, but the entertainment value and the on-camera presence will also get substantially better the longer a creator has been making videos. This is very true for Felix, or PewDiePie. He started making videos all the way back in 2010, which was eight years ago. So there's been multiple times in his career where his videos have gotten better and better. In fact, I didn't even start watching PewDiePie in 2010. A lot of his early content I wasn't a big fan of, so I didn't actually start watching him daily until around 2016, 2017. But maybe you'll like his early videos, who knows? Another logical place to start watching his content would be the most popular videos, right? I mean, surely this is his best work, right? Well, some of it is. His most viewed video is at 88 million views. It's his diss track to T-Series, the channel that was supposed to actually pass him in viewers a few months ago, but uh, ha hasn't been able to do it yet. <laughs> this is definitely worth watching, but his next two most popular videos are funny montages from four and five years ago. Honestly, I don't appreciate these videos as much as some of the videos he puts out today. I think the biggest part of figuring out where to start watching PewDiePie's content will come down to taste. And that's why I want to show you the different eras of PewDiePie's content so that you can figure out where the best place to start watching is. Let's talk about the beginning. Welcome uh, everyone to part one of Nightmare House 2. I had to look over so I didn't say it wrong. The first era of PewDiePie's content is the very beginning. This is mainly horror game Let's Plays along with games like Happy Wheels and other Rage type games. This is your most cliche type of content when you think of Let's Plays now. It's just that PewDiePie was one of the very first YouTubers to really popularize this form of Let's Plays where you use a face cam and do wacky edits over the game. I'd argue that this era lasted from 2010 to the end of 2012. If you're into horror Let's Plays mainly, then you're probably going to find some content here that you might enjoy. I mean, these are the videos that got Felix from 0 to 2 million subscribers. So while his content strategy has definitely changed over the years, this was still a very big milestone for him back in 2012. He also has a pretty big series called Fridays with PewDiePie, where more of the focus is on Felix rather than PewDiePie, his kind of persona. I mean, this is where he's able to talk to his audience. These do vary in content. Some of them he talks about fan mail, while others he answers questions. I think this is really the foundation of modern PewDiePie content because his main focus now isn't on video games. It's almost solely focused on interacting with his community and memes, but we'll get into that in a bit. At the end of 2012 starts what I would argue as the second era of PewDiePie, and this is because this is where he starts to branch out into different types of games rather than just horror and rage type games. 
So if you're not a horror fan, but still like Let's Plays, then you'll probably find something here that suits your taste. In fact, I'm quite surprised at the different types of games here. Everything from Conker's Bad Fur Day to Kingdom Hearts to Nino Kuni, there's quite a lot of different games here. He never really stops playing the horror and rage games at this point, but there's definitely more of a balance between those and other games that he truly wants to play. This content strategy goes until about 2015. There are also a handful of different content that he tries out here, including a podcast with YouTuber Cinnamon Toast Ken, and tons of different videos featuring his girlfriend, now fiance, Marcia. He also starts covering different topics. There's videos about anime, videos where he shows his Photoshop edits, and even a series called Five Weird Stuff Online. And then 2016 happens, and this is the era of PewDiePie where his old content and his new content starts to merge. This is also where YouTube Red partners with Felix to create the show Scare PewDiePie, where he goes through these real life scenarios similar to horror video games. This is one of the first things that I watched with Felix in it, and even though we'll never get season two, rest in peace, if you do have YouTube Premium, I'd recommend watching this. It's entertaining, it's funny, and there's even this whole like other plot thing that happens on top of the game show-esque format that it has that's really engaging. But it's October 2016 where PewDiePie's content really starts to change into his newer content. This starts with an entire 14 part vlog series, which is similar to any of the vlogs that he does now. They lack the energy that Felix has in its original Let's Plays, but that's honestly good because this is the moment where PewDiePie turns into Felix. And I know that sounds weird, but what I mean is that post 2016 PewDiePie is more genuine. It, it's more of Felix not trying to be entertaining. He just speaks his truth, which makes the videos more interesting and at the end of the day, more entertaining as well. You could argue that this is when PewDiePie grows up, but he still has that kind of childlike humor mentality sometimes. It just ends up being funnier because you know it's coming from like the genuine Felix Shelberg rather than the almost persona how's it going bros PewDiePie here that he has throughout his earlier content. And this is the end of 2016 to July 2017 throughout his transitional era of old content to new content. These are the videos that I started watching actually. More of this content was just him in front of the camera talking about whatever he wanted to talk about. There were still Let's Plays, but they weren't the majority anymore. His content still had a certain charisma and energy to it, but like I said, it didn't feel forced like some of his earliest content did. This is where I think Felix really started to understand himself more, and instead of catering to what was popular, he started to slowly pivot to making the content that he wanted to make. Ironically, this is also where controversial PewDiePie started, which basically means that this is the moment where the mainstream media started latching on to Felix's career. Like, he always made some kind of controversial content, like even in the very beginning, but it wasn't until they knew that if you put PewDiePie in the article, that that's gonna get them more clicks and more views. So basically, this is where you start hearing Felix, PewDiePie, this is controversial. This is the controversial things that he did. This is where it started. And I don't wanna talk about politics because that's not the channel I am, but I do think it's a bit ridiculous that everybody is still latching onto that part of Felix's content when, yeah, he makes controversial and edgy jokes occasionally, but it's always been humor. And, you know, it just is what it is. But one of my favorite videos around this time is an hour and 24 minute video titled talking about some stuff that I've never talked about. It's basically an interview, but it's super laid back and it answers a lot of questions about Felix's life before he became the popular YouTuber that he is today. So if you're like me at all, who likes to research and learn about these rags to riches stories, then this is a definite watch. And this brings us to what I consider to be the modern day PewDiePie era. On July 5th, 2017, Felix uploaded a video called I'm Stepping Back, where he talks about how mentally he's not in the best place, but he still enjoys making videos, he just doesn't want to put two videos a day anymore. He'd been doing that for years now, and he wanted to put more effort into each video without stressing himself out, which I completely understand. It's at this point where the majority of his videos are not Let's Plays anymore, which I really enjoy because I think this is the content where I think most people can enjoy from his channel. 
He started two of his modern day series in mid 2017, You Laugh You Lose, which he basically reacts to memes and this has the subtext of he'll try not to laugh and if he does he loses. He oftentimes fails which is a running gag but they're entertaining anyways. His second series here is Last Week I Asked You, where he asks his community to do a particular thing like Photoshop something or create an intro and so on and so forth. This series quickly just turned into Felix going on his subreddit and looking at memes curated by his community, which I think is kind of dope because he is the biggest channel on YouTube and yet he's still very much in tune with his community. Around this time he also starts doing movie reviews and then like one-offs about what's happening in the YouTube community. He really started to do whatever he wanted to talk about, again, which I, I really enjoy. And this finally brings me to 2018 PewDiePie. Here he starts additional series including Book Club where every couple of months he talks about books that he read. This got a lot more people into reading in 2018 which is kind of dope. He also has Pew News which is quite literally a news show and I don't watch the news. I try not to read about the news. Like literally PewDiePie is where I get my news from and if that's not like a strange thing about the modern day then I don't know what is. There's also Meme Review. Where he reviews memes it's it's in the name so yes 99 percent of pewdiepie videos now are just about memes but that's why i think everybody could basically enjoy his content now it's hashtag relatable it's funny it involves the community modern pewdiepie videos are basically the exact same thing that memes are they just don't happen to die every couple of weeks but hopefully this helps any of the new PewDiePie subscribers know exactly where they can start watching his content. Technically, you can just start with his video today. There's kind of a lore behind his content with reoccurring memes and references. So if you really want to, you can start watching his 2017, 2018 backlogs. You can really start to figure out where those start and where those continue. But I'd argue that if you just started with today's video, see if you like it. Let autoplay like pick the next video for you after that you could be just as fine. As far as his old content, I'm thinking about going back and watching his Fridays with PewDiePie content because I do think it is still the foundation of what makes his content today. And honestly, I just think that PewDiePie or Felix is probably the most watchable channel on YouTube. There's content there for just about everyone. His work ethic is amazing and he's got a great personality, which makes his videos very entertaining. So if you're a new PewDiePie subscriber, Welcome to the club. There's like 80 million of you people now. It's pretty crazy. And uh, go, go start watching some of his videos if you haven't already. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. This episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by my Discord. If you've been enjoying any of my episodes of Your Everyday Nerd or anything else on the channel of Zack Snyder Productions, then I want to invite you to the Zack Snyder Productions Discord. Over the past year and a half, I've really been able to get close to a lot of the members in the community through Discord. Without Discord, I wouldn't be able to be as close with the community as I have been. So I wanna get more people that are watching the videos here, over there, so we can talk about anything and everything that you guys wanna talk about. We talk about movies and games, TV shows, anime, pretty much anything. Oftentimes we'll get into voice chat and just talk while we're playing games. It's pretty fun. And occasionally I do a movie night, which I want to bring back in 2019, where on Friday nights we watch a movie together using a program called Rabbit or Parsec. And it's pretty fun. I like it. A lot of people there like it. Uh, you don't even have to watch the videos to be in the Discord. So bring your friends. It's just there to have a good time. And hopefully you guys will uh, be able to meet new people within the community that way. So check out the link in the description box below to join the Discord and I hope to see you there soon. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you didn't for whatever reason, you can hit the dislike button. Let me know down in the comments when you started watching PewDiePie. And if you haven't watched him yet, what's stopping you from doing so? Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd and I will see you tomorrow. I said Your Everyday Nerd like super fast. Like Your Everyday Nerd, goodbye. <laughs>